Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In today's video, I'm going to take a break from Yersina and make an animation of objects colliding with each other under the force of gravity. Basically, I want to simulate and visualize physics in Python. So we're going to be using two modules, which is PyGame and PyMonk. I think most of you who are watching the video and following my channel are already familiar with PyGame. And if you're not, no problem, you could just follow along. PyMonk might sound unfamiliar, it is also the first time that it appears on my channel. So let's see what PyMonk does. So if we go into our browser and we search up PyMonk, and we have this uh, first link, we can open it up and we just read it. So PyMonk is an easy to use Pythonic 2D physics library that can be used whenever you need 2D rigid body physics from Python. Uh, it is perfect when you need 2D physics in your game, demo, or any other application, and it is built on top of every capable 2D physics library. So this is what we're going to be using to apply physics in our uh, simulation. So like Pygame, you also need to install PyMonk to use it, and I've covered how to install any module in some of my previous videos. Basically, you just need to run pip install PyMonk from the command window. Now, I'm not going to show the details here. So first, let's import the module and define some constants we're going to use for this animation. Import pygame and pymonk. So to define our constants, we'll set the width equal to 600 and the height equal to 500. We can set the FPS equal to 80 FPS. Now for our colors, I'll set black equal to 000. zero, zero. I'll set green equal to 128, 255, 128, and red equal to 255, 0, 0. So now we can initialize the pi game uh, and create a window. So pi game.init. We'll set the window equal to pi game dot display dot set mode to the width and the height. And we'll set the clock equal to pygame.time.clock. So now to create, or now to keep their window up, we'll have a running variable, say equal to true. And while running for event in pygame.event.get, if event.type is equal to pygame.quit, and we'll set running equal to false. So essentially, when we want to put out the uh, window, this will allow us to do so. So now I want to fill in the background with the color green, and but the default color is black. And I'll set pygame.display.flip and set clock.tick at the FPS variable that we created earlier. And at the end, we want to quit out of Pygame. So if I save and run this, now we see that we have a window with a light green background. So now let's create the PyMonk space. So the PyMonk space is the basic unit of the simulation. You can add rigid bodies, shapes, joints, shapes and joints to it, and then step them all forward together through time. So what I'm going to do is create a space variable equal to PyMonk pymonk.space I'll have space I'll set space at gravity equal to 0 200 so it's going to be 0 in the x direction and 200 in the y direction and now we can create some bodies so a body is a physical object that is affected by physics there are three types of pymonk bodies which are dynamic static and kinematic Dynamic bodies re react to collisions and are affected by forces and gravity. So these are the type of bodies that we want the physics engine to simulate for us. And this body type is by default. Static bodies are bodies that never move, but other bodies can collide with them. And kinematic bodies are bodies that are controlled from your code instead of inside the physics engine. So in this animation, we're going to create two static bodies and numerous dynamic bodies. 
So now let's create our first static body, which is a ball. Let's create a static ball body and set it equal to monk dot body I'll set the body type equal to monk dot body dot static I'll set static ball body dot position equal to 300 on the x 300 on the y axis and static ball shape equal to pi monk dot circle pi monk dot circle with a static body ball and 30 so the body shape is going to be a circle with the radius of 3 and then we'll set static ball shape dot elasticity equal to 0.9 and this will decide how bouncy a ball is and the value of 0 means that there's no bounce and now we can add this to our space so static ball, ball body and static ball shape now we just created a ball in PyMonk but we won't see it unless we use a tool to visualize it so that's when PyGame comes in so inside of our while loop We call pygame.draw.circle the window black variable static ball static ball body dot position and 30. So if I save and run this, now we see a static ball in black with a size of 30. So now let's create our second static body, and this will be a line segment. So underneath our ball, I'll set the segment body equal to high monk dot body, and I'll set the body type equal to high monk dot body dot static. I'll set the segment shape equal to high monk dot segment the segment body. 0, 350, 600, 405. So the 0, 350, those are the coordinates at the first point. 600, 400, those are the coordinates at the second point. And this value of 5 is the line width. So now I can set the segment shape uh, elasticity equal to 0.9. And I'll add this to the space as well segment body and the segment shape so we still need pygame to visualize it so what I'll do is I'll draw it so pygame.draw dot line window black 0 350 600 400 and 5 so now when I run this I see a black line segment with a width of 5 below the static ball so now let's create our dynamic bodies. In this case, small balls that will fall uh, from the top and then collide with a big static ball and then the line segment. Because we're going to create many balls, we can define a function for this. So at the top, what I'll do is define a new ball function that will take in the space and position parameter. So I'll set the body equal to pi monk dot body one one hundred body type, and I set the body type equal to pi monk dot body dot dynamic. I'll set the body position equal to the position, and I set the shape equal to pi monk dot circle with the body and value 10 also the shape dot elasticity equal to 1 the space dot add 
the body and the shape, and then I'll return the shape. So if we look back here, this first parameter represents the mass. Uh, it is usually ignored when the body type is static or kinematic. The second parameter, 100, represents the inertia. And in physics, the means resistance to a change. It means resistance to change in velocity. So this function will create a dynamic body with the circle shape, and the body and shape will then be added to the space, and then return the shape when called. And since we're going to create a lot of dynamic balls, we're going to create a list to hold them so we can easily handle the movement of each individual one later. So I'll create my list here. So I'll set it to an empty list. And then we want to create the dynamic balls by clicking the mouse. And each time the mouse is clicked, a ball will be created, and the position of the ball uh, will be where the mouse is clicked. So now we can call the function to create the balls. We want to check if event.type is equal to pygame.mouse button down. We want to append a new ball to the balls list. So append new ball space event uh, position. And again, we need pygame to visualize the ball is created. So what I could do is iterate through the list. So for ball and balls, position x will be equal to an int ball dot body dot position x, and the position y is equal to int ball dot body dot position dot y. So now I could draw this with pygame dot draw circle window, red, position x, and position y with value 10. So when I save and run this, when I click the mouse, let's see here, this should be position x. So if I run this again, and I click a value, you see that although the balls are created, wherever I click, they're not moving. That's because we have to call the step function in PyMonk to constantly update the simulation. So what I'll do is underneath the clock.tick, I'll call space.step with a value of 1 over the frames per second. So now if I save and run this, now you see that when I click and create a ball, they drop under gravity and collide with the surfaces. So I can hover one and create a ball over the circle and notice how the balls interact. So the balls will just keep bouncing like in the real world because of gravity. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.